concept was this this game that was like a you're stuck in an options menu it originally appears to be something nice but then it turns dark and um what's darker than the devil think enjoy or come to Pony Island for like an amazing puzzle game. I guess it's part of the pacing in between the weird moments that they really are there for. There were some games that gave me a real sense that there was, that you were kind of on the surface but there was so much that you could dig and find. Like a big one was the original Portal. I think I just had such a good experience with it because, I mean it came out at a time where like there weren't as many games like that. And also I played it without knowing anything about it. So I, I did think it was just a little puzzle game that came in the orange box, which I had gotten to play Team Fortress 2. And then I was like, holy, when I started to like go behind the walls and see the scrawling and stuff, that had such an impact on me. I think maybe even just that moment of seeing the stuff behind the walls, that right there might've been one of the biggest inspirations for Pony Island. I think it, it does go back to that creepy sensation of Portal and a few games like it. Um, just this feeling of, of the game knowing more than you do and kind of um, knowing that who knows what's going to happen next and, and if I poke around here or there, maybe I'll uncover like, something weird. So that, that feeling um, definitely drives me, especially for Pony Island. I was creative as a kid and I was allowed to be creative so I would draw stuff and make little board games and stuff, uh, little figurines out of clay and, and make really rudimentary board games. So I guess that started really young but I guess I started taking it more seriously much later when I was trying to decide what I wanted to do for college slash university and, and I decided to go into computer science and that's when the possibility of like doing this as a job kind of became more real and then uh, after I got that degree in computer science I worked in the games industry as a programmer and then I kind of used that to kind of pay the bills while I made Pony Island. I think it was relatively short. It was over the course of a year, but it was a little bit on and off because there was a period where I was waiting to hear back from publishers and I had, I had made a 30 minute demo of the game, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it on Steam or if I was going to get a publisher. So I kind of stopped during that because I was like, oh, what's the point if I if I can't get on Steam? Um, but then, I, then there were parts where I was intensely working on it. And also for most of that year, I was working full time and I was trying to squeeze in uh, the Pony Island time outside of work. But then later on, I was able to work part time. And that's when I got to buckle down and commit much more uh, time to Pony Island. So so maybe if you squished all, all of it down, it was almost like a six month development time, which is quite short. I had a friend in Vancouver who I had worked with at one of my companies, and he helped me design that demo to a degree. Um, and he also kind of sketched out, like I was panicking, I was like, what, what is this game gonna be? And he, he sketched out like a, a rough kind of skeleton that I might fill in. So he kind of kept me on track. Um, and then I got in touch with Jonas Senzel, who is the composer of Pony Island and composer of The Hex. I had found him on Reddit as a person saying, hey, I'll make music for free. Uh, just tell me what you want. And I was like, okay. I met Dan um, just on on Reddit, like on a forum before anything. He was just like a dude. I was just a dude, and there wasn't even any money involved at that point. So like, and I just happened to be posting on Reddit, and he was looking at Reddit. That little interaction. Then I worked on one thing with him. Then I, he ended up, you know. Uh, taking me on for Pony Island, 
And then that, like even working on Pony Island, it was like this tiny little, he was still working a day job and everything. And I was just like, you know, I will take what I can get. I'm just trying to practice writing and everything. And then slowly it started to get to get bigger. And then, you know, this YouTuber played it or that YouTuber played it or whatever. And here we are. <laughs> there's a breakdown of happy sappy cheesy tracks and crazy devil music and at the very beginning i even like did all these i got really excited and i like wrote all this stuff and like pretty much none of it was used in the final game i was just shooting stuff off and then slowly he would ask track for track and he would ask for a track and then i would write it and i'd usually write stuff in a night like i would write most of the tracks on pony island were written in five hours I actually took a lot of inspiration compositionally from death metal so like some of the tracks I would take I would write on guitar in like the drop tuning uh, with distortion and then I would figure out compositionally what was going on on the guitar riff and then I would just Port that into into chiptune. I cheated a lot, eight bit wise. I think a lot of the drum samples are like kits or like electronic drums with a um, plugin called a bit crusher or a bit reducer on it. So, and I even I think I mastered some of the tracks with a bit crusher too, to just be like, eh, we'll make it sound older. I think a lot of it has to do with um, getting a game that's unique to work with and I'm so so lucky just because you know Dan is an amazing developer um, and when you're presented with a game that's that has in a really intriguing world it makes it easy to say let's make something unique. Mm -hmm.